I'm Lizzie. And I'm Izzy. And we need help. Each week we stumble through a new book, method, or concept that brings us one step closer to being our best self. Yes, we make fun of ourselves. And others. But mostly just ourselves. So here's to not taking self-help quite so seriously. Welcome to We Need Help. This is Lizzie, and I am without Izzy today, and I have a beautiful guest named Christina B. Pearson. Izzy is in France right now, and uh, she her, she's doing a training, and all of her people who were coming into training, their flights were late, so she can't get to us. But So I just decided to do this on my own with Let's Christina. Go. And I'm just so excited to have you. Were you just speaking French? Yes, <laughs> I am. I am. That's why I was laughing. I was like, she's in France. This is perfect. Um, I'm half French, half Swedish. So my dad's from France. My mom is from Sweden. My mm -hmm. husband is French and we speak French uh, at home and with our son. So. Okay. So uh, years ago, I had this beautiful crystal, crystal therapist. I talked about her all the time online. Her name's Lori Buchanan. Um, she told me that I was from France in a former life and I 1000% uh -huh. know it because e everything French feels like home to me. Like I it's it. just the food, everything. So, um, it was weird. I was just, uh, I was just talking to Isa and she was like, I'm, I'm here in France. It's your place. I know this. Uh, and then she couldn't come on. And then I hear you speaking French and I'm like, it's meant to be. What? Right. But this is the beauty, right? The synchronicities of life. It's so magical, uh, I, especially it's, now. It's so magical. Where do you live now? Uh, we live in Naples, Florida. Do you know that I live in Naples, Florida? Stop it. Okay. Well, I'm, that's okay. We got to get so, together. <laughs> I, so I wanted to hit record because I noticed something on yours. I was like, I wonder if she's from Naples, Florida. I lived in the Virgin Islands for five years before this. And then for the last five years, we've lived here in Naples. Well, we came here. So the story of us is that three days after they closed down New York City, mm -hmm. this is the true story. I got flashes in my head of very bad things like bridges closing and this and that. And we didn't really know what was going on, but I knew right. we had to leave. So okay. I literally told my husband, we have to go now and Two hours later, we had rented a car, packed it with our son, who at the time was six, and we drove oh. 20 hours straight to Naples. And the incredible thing is I'd never been to Naples. I just chose it. That is so cool. I have the chills. I'm just dying. I'm dying because yeah. you're from Naples. You, like, why? Why? Is, <laughs> like, this is so cool. Well, I love you know, I knew Florida. Like for me at the time, I was thinking, okay, health and wellness. I want to be in the sun. I want to be somewhere where the climate is warm because I tend to feel better. Mm. Um, where it's a lot of sun, so there's solar power, you know, where oh, you yeah. can grow things all year. Although, you know, some things you can't, but you have that sun power all the time. Yeah. And that was the mindset. <clears throat> and then Naples, it's interesting because it came under my radar because a friend of a friend lived here and we had looked at it two years before to maybe vacation. And so it popped up in my brain and I said, you know what, let's go there. And we literally called her on the road mm -hmm. and said, we're coming. Can you help us find a place to I rent? I love this. I and love an, this. Yeah. Hour later we had a place and it's honestly been magical ever since we arrived. You I believe Naples just... is magical. I believe the universe is magical. I can't believe it. Yeah. I can't believe some people don't believe in magic. I'm like, that's the only thing I believe in. <laughs> Truth, right? More and more. I feel like it's, um, yeah, it's the literal love and magic. It's it. Love. That's all there is. That's all there that's is. It. That that's really the only exists. thing that's real. Yep. I totally agree. I'm so happy to meet you. I'm so Me excited. Too. Like every, Me too. so, and, and we'll be able to get together. So that's, awesome. I know that's even more awesome. I'm I super know. excited. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, okay. So we ha I want to tell you what it, kind of where we've been on. Cause we started, uh, we need help, um, during the pandemic, we just decided we wanted to be 
do what we do. We were doing it every Monday anyway. We were meeting with each other and we were kind of helping each other in our in our journey. And we just decided it was great and we love doing it. We should just start a podcast doing it. And this will be our 81st episode, I believe. So wow. it's like, amazing. yeah, it's so amazing. amazing. We love it. We love it so much. But I can't believe just how much, like, do you know who Candace Tranter is? No, you remind me so much of her. And I oh. like, like just your Instagram, by the way, it's beautiful. Thank you. Oh my Thank God. You. It's gorgeous. I Thank love it. You. Um, but like you, you're just right in the path of where we need to do to go. So a year ago, I was in a extremely abusive friendship. Mm. And it was with, uh, with somebody that my child, she was like, uh, guiding my child. So I was in a really weird place. So she discarded me. Hmm. And um, I, I have been on this journey to, to figure out why I would have even why I stayed because I had like the biggest regret because I stayed in the relationship for about two years longer than I really should have. And why I let her kind of use me and why I watched her use other people that's just not like me. I was just in a really, really weird place with it. So over the last year, I have learned so much about myself and become so much healthier with my relationships and boundaries. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, I've stood grounded for the last year. So... Like just inch by inch, I get, I just became more and more myself because I had strayed away from myself so much. Mm -hmm. So after for the year anniversary, which was April first, which I love that it was April Fool's Day, it just makes me so happy because it's the, I had it's the been funny a fool. Wink. Yeah, it's yeah. the wink of the universe. <laughs> so Izzy and I, because we she watched me and she was such a part of this journey, she said, let's do, or you know, we decided to do a one-year anniversary of it. Well, we opened a can of worms because everybody and their uncle has been fallen victim to a narcissist or a very toxic relationship. Um, and it we've kind of hit a honey hole of hurt. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So we have been through it. We've talked about it. Now we're talking about healing with the last two episodes have been about how to stop the process, begin healing. And then you were le led to us. That's amazing. So tell me what you do. Gorgeous. I love everything you just shared. I think it's wonderful. I love the way you started. I just want to say that I love the, the natural synchronistic way you guys just said, you know, let's just do this, you know, cause that's, <laughs> that's the beauty of life. That's being in flow, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, before I start to talk about that, I want to just say two things about everything you were sharing, reframing that you spirit freed you from that friendship. Mm. Shh. Spirit freed you from that relationship I love rather that. than you were discarded. Mm -hmm. You were freed. Yes. Wasn't right. And right. the other thing I want to say is just interesting. You said April fools because you said you were a fool. And the way I heard it was it was April fool's day because none of it's real. Yeah. Right. None of this is real. It's right. a programming. It's a programming. And so that's the way I'll springboard into what I do. I love that. It's First. a programming. It's not you. Right. It's not you. Okay. You know, um, and I know from my own experience, 25 years of unraveling my own uh, people pleasing codependency um, that um, it can be really tricky because Money, many of the patterns we've developed were they're not even visible to us anymore because we've um, we have normalized them in our life. So there's this tendency to keep repeating the pattern. Mm. And the other thing that's going on that I see a lot in the world more and more is that 
the victim mentality is being really pushed. So there's a lot of focus which are they are true but on the terms right narcissist and this and this person is this and they did this to mm -hmm. you and all this stuff so i begin with that because um one of the biggest things that has freed me of my codependency um has actually been radical responsibility i love and that I, and i'm going to come back to that because that's a, that's a big one. Um, I need that but, like tattooed on a place on me that I see every right. day. It's like so important. I, I call it getting in the driver's seat. Right. Radical right. responsibility. Right. Radical responsibility. The thing that's tricky for codependents and well, it, with the radical responsibility um, is so the tendency to people please, right? The tendency to uh, discard things that we want in favor of someone else's needs um, is all rooted in lack of safety. So it's generally something as a child that we developed, yeah. right, as a coping mechanism. And as a child, yeah. it most likely kept us safe. I, I definitely did that. And right. 100%. I mean, it kept was, us safe, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's something we used and we were really smart to use those skits. Mm -hmm. So it was either, either getting really quiet and doing everything that, um, the person who was like taking care of us wanted, never asking for anything. Or the flip side is, um, being yelling and screaming and being very aggressive and like defending. Right. And so we bring those tools into adulthood. I'm a Gemini. So I did both. Total, well, and we do fluctuate. One yeah. has to, sometimes there's a tendency to do one or the other. Okay. Um, I tend to be more of the warrior uh, mm. archetype. And um, I would like scare, my mother would even say that I scared her, but that was my coping mechanism. So I would say initially in my, in my work with understanding myself, I noticed that I was tending to put up my defense mechanism really fast with yeah. people, um, protection, like heavily boundaried, like rigid right. boundaries. And there's something yeah. wrong with that. And then some people have like no boundaries, right? And if you look at my sister and I, she's rigid boundary. I'm no boundary. Right. So this, you see, you lived yeah. in the same house. Yeah. Two and methods. She's, like she's black and white. I'm gray. That's right. So there we go. Well, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're a Gemini. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe she's a Taurus. I don't know. She's a, she's a, <laughs> guess again guess again she well she's fighter so is she yeah. a fire is she sag aries she's, she's a uh scorpio scorpio she's okay fire. Well, scorpio scorpio is in its own i mean scorpio is technically right a water sign but i put them in fire is it really personally. i thought it was a fire sign yeah but they're so fire i mean it's like oh my god it's like <laughs> gas water maybe yeah sort of <laughs> um so you know, starting with that, it's like, um, so you do all these things, right? You have these coping mechanisms, right? And then you go into your adult life and you're still using them. And so what you're mm. doing is you are abandoning yourself to be loved, abandoning mm. yourself to, I will do anything to love you. The tricky part is that there's an archetype that's created which makes us the good guys mm. and the victims. Yeah. Right. I don't think and anybody is, nobody's all bad or all good. No. Right. You, you hit it perfectly. So the first thing is to about radical responsibility. Thank you. I almost forgot that. I almost lost that thread. <laughs> We're not going, you know? I wrote it down. So I'm okay, not getting good. rid of it at all. <laughs> is that, um, what will happen most most of the time with someone who and I would say honestly I have to say codependency work people pleasing work I don't know I've never met a human being or a woman who doesn't would not benefit from it never met one person ever depending you know wherever they are it's very it's even the ones that have a lot of boundaries and strength there's still ways in which it's keeping us in prison I right because yeah, you know, I, I mean? couldn't agree more. I like, I don't know. I mean, I have five younger sisters, nine nieces. My grandmother come, came from five women. 
you know, I don't know a lot of women that don't possess at least codependency tendencies or people pleasing tendencies. They right. might go in a flow, like an ebb and flow of it, but it's right. like most of the people I know at least sacrifice themselves for their children. Right. Oh, yeah. The children you know, codependency thing is a whole, that's a whole nother, that's like the, you know, that's been my experience as a parent is like, that is the place where you're like, oh, you think you've got it covered and then you have a I child know. and you're like, oh, start like, over. Yeah. Start over. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think that's one of the, the worst parts of codependency. Like, I don't think we have guidance for that as mothers. Right. You know, Absolutely. and like, I try to remember always like thinking, okay, she's watching me. What do I want her to do with her children? Do I want her to be like ragged with, mm. you know, for her children? Or do I want her to be grounded and strong and, and, and at peace with her children? Like, mm. so I try to stay in that. <laughs> Sometimes I trip and fall and like, you know, it's horrible, but most like, I try to remember that. Well, tripping and yeah, so the whole the parenting thing. Let's come to back to that because that's a whole yes, that's a that's a big one. But the main so the and it, it ties into parenthood. Honestly, the main thing that's tricky with codependency and radical responsibility is this: what uh, we would tend to do codependence when we start on the journey of radical responsibility is that we start whipping ourselves and becoming overly responsible so that the reality sets in that wait i'm not necessarily a victim all the time could i be manipulating people to make them love me and then creating resentments when they when i say yes when i want to say no mm. like making it their fault but they just gave me an invitation and i chose poorly yeah. <laughs> you know like when you start to see that and you say wait a minute wait a minute Oh, then the immediate response is to be like, I am the scum of the earth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's right away. Cause that's, it's, so, there's so much lack of confidence that, you know, um, that's the first place you go. Mm. But I would say that much like alcoholism, right? Codependency is, is a disease, you know, of extremes. They call it the disease to please, right? The disease to please, but it also is the, oh, we can rhyme that. Ooh, mm. disease to please and disease of extremes. It's not really okay. rhyming, but I love we'll, it. we'll pretend. So basically, you either are completely blameless and a victim and they're mm. an a-hole, or you're responsible for everything and you're scum of the earth. So they mm. say, you know, they'll say I'm an uh, egomaniac with an inferiority complex, right? It goes from <laughs> here to here to here to here. I often think it's almost like it's the disease of not being okay with just being human. And that's mm. why when you were talking about your experience, I immediately was like, no, I don't, right. I, I think, you know what, we're human. And the whole work, and I don't even like using that term because it's actually the whole joy is becoming conscious of our right. patterns. Then we get to decide. I think that right. like in all of the pain of it all, because like, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've ho-hashed it out. I think the most freeing thing in the world I did, and I, I've talked about this before, is I had regret, I, I said, I said to myself, I regret this. I regret mm. doing this. And it like, it made, it made me pick up the bag and say, no, this, this shit's mine. <laughs> like mm. I, this was my I my doing right. it nobody was doing it I did it to myself you know right. I didn't protect my child I I have regrets and you know that was the best thing uh, that was the best thing I did for myself right right so that in a sense that's the whole radical responsibility and I would say the other term I didn't say is radical honesty because we spend a lot of our time almost convincing ourselves that we aren't who we are and we don't think what we think yeah based on what we think we're supposed to be thinking and what we're supposed to be doing right it's like that we're the queens of justification for our actions or lack thereof right Justi yeah i'm like yeah. i'm gonna justify 
being a complete piece of shit by this other person's behavior. Or I'm going to justify not removing myself from the situation because she was so manipulative when I just really wanted the best for myself or for my child. That's what really what it was. Right. And I likelihood just, is she probably triggered you something very young mm -hmm. about not feeling loved. And yes. so we do that in relationships with friends. We do that in relationships with partners. And I'll tell you a secret because, I mean, I was married and then I left and I continue to do my work. And now I'm married um, a long time with my present husband and we have a beautiful son and it's a lovely relationship. And I honestly feel like I can be 100 percent myself, which is incredible. That's so but cool. We still found each other because we have childhood patterns and wounds that we're meant to heal together. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to say that there's no like if there's a myth out there, it's that you aren't going to do that with the good relationship. That's right. I don't believe that's true. I think that we're meant to be in relation to learn from each other. I agree. Um, you know, and that's been my husband and I my relationship with my husband has absolutely helped to heal me. Oh my God, mine. Well, he, had, I, we work together on everything, whether it's fixing, you know, something in the house or fixing each other. We like we're we really enjoy working together. That's and amazing. I, and some of the the best things about the people that I love and I love uh, like couples that I love is they're working together to make things better in all aspects of their life. I think that's the best thing we can do for yes. each other is like, yes. okay, we're going to work together to, to be better every single day. Yes. Yes. Right. And, and, and so then we tie back to radical responsibility and radical honesty. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing to me, but somewhere along the line, particularly women, although I do work with some men, it's just, mm -hmm. it shows up a little differently. Um, is that somewhere along the line, there was messaging that was so strong around what does the ideal um, wife look like? What does the ideal mother look like and how they're supposed to behave and what they're supposed to do? There's, or even just the flip side of that, we grew up in the era of like feminism and, and stuff. And that is important because there was an imbalance. But then when we go to the extreme, right, and we're, I'm battling for my turf all the time, you know, creating these waves of battle, battle, battle with my partner. Um, and it is, um, it's tricky. It's very tricky to find our, our way. I believe the only way to find it is to, and I would keep repeating it, but is the reason radical honesty and radical responsibility is so vital is because it's literally about returning your focus to yourself. Right. Because the main thing we do, right, is that we're constantly focused on others, what others are doing or what we can do for others, what they need. Well, I think we like got we got interrupted in somewhere. I don't know. It just felt like if you focus too much on yourself, you were selfish. That's right. And like, and the older I get, the more I realize is if I tend my own knit, knitting, I can like really provide warmth for everyone else. You know, it's like it's the more I the older I get, and the more I understand is like, OK, it's not selfish to be self-aware and to be focused on my behavior and focused on what I want. I mean, how many women are out there like, you know, not spending the their time with their children because they they were told they they should have a place in the workplace even though they don't even want it this is exactly and that's the unfortunate like you know everything goes too far the unfortunate push with feminism right it started out of this beautiful idea and then all of a sudden it's like oh it's not good enough to choose to be a mom and be home like yeah. you know this thing and you're like but but uh, what do I do? And again, that is because the outside people telling us what to do do not know what we need. But on a general level, <clears throat> we have been being trained and I would say programmed to outsource our power to others 
for a mm. very long time. And you see it in pharmaceutical medical fields oh. you're, over your health. You see it so deeply. This you great know, fear. Like, do you think that like we've been, I, I feel like we've had the word busy shoved up our ass for yeah. so long. Like if I call my friend today, mm -hmm. any of them, and I said, hey, what are you doing? I would say the chances are one in a million that someone's going to say nothing. They won't say it because if they say it, that means they're, they're worth nothing. Mm. Mm. You know, like if right. like like sometimes on Wednesdays, I did Wednesday is my day that I take to myself and we just sit in the house. We don't do anything that we don't want to do. And it's like if you called me and I said, you said, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. You'd be like, what? Like, are we allowed to do nothing now? I don't think we are in society. It's very interesting. I mean, if you said that to me, I would laugh and think it was the most kick-ass thing I'd ever heard in my life. I'm just telling you, that call would be me, my... Call me like, on a Wednesday. You'll get it. I'd be like, oh, do you want to like maybe add drinking coffee and like hanging out and doing nothing <laughs> with a friend? Would that yeah. interest you? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, come on over. Cuddle. Let's let's get up on the couch and watch, do it. watch a little stu stupid movie. I think you are right. And I've actually realized because, you know, since we came here to Naples, we've shifted the way we are, right? I mm. used to work full time. Uh, my son was in a private school. We came here. We shifted to me working, you know, doing my different things that I do part time, kind of whenever I can fit it in. We're homeschooling. Mm. I'm going back to a lot of what you'd say is traditional, you know, rolls i'm making sourdough i'm like learning all these oh, things God. i love to do you and i are going to get along just fine i when you said yeah i know we will and <laughs> i know but the thing that i've noticed is i am so much more connected to my intuition and my connection to source and mm -hmm. flow i get messages downloads so much more than ever before and so it made me really wonder if part of this busyness that has been thrown in is because it disconnects us from the inner knowing. And this is why looking at codependency tendencies, which is the focus outward right. and shifting it is like literally a game changer for life, for the whole life. It really is. It really is because when we're radically honest, when we're, when we're focused inward, then we make decisions from a different place. And mm -hmm. if we're guided to do things, we're not second guessing ourselves the same way, right? So yeah. we're really being guided and we're like, oh, like if I get this tilt, you should go to Kunjani. It's a coffee place, you know, you, you should go I've there. I've been there. <laughs> I, yeah, it's really near, near me, so I go there a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, the old me, if I had stuff to do, whatever would be like, oh, you know, that's not responsible. You shouldn't do that. Da, da, da. Mm. The new me is like, oh, you're getting a hit. There's a reason you're supposed to go, go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, like, let me, there, there's been three times I can remember my happiest times in my life. One was when we were all in quarantine. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I know it's unpopular opinion, but like I was happiest then because I was just focused on what was the most important to me. And I learned from that. It's like, okay, that's what, that's why that happened, guys. Like we're all, we were supposed to learn from that. What made you crazy? And then that's a problem. What was your, what made you happy? Then do more of that. It feels like that was just such a lesson and I hope it doesn't go unlearned for people or untaken advantage of because it was the best time for me. Yeah. Oh, this is my husband I always say this is this period from when we left New York uh, has been the most magical time in our entire life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you. Yes. I do think it was a choice to learn. Mm -hmm. And yeah. certain people... Some people, I think, chose to regroup kind of a question, what's important, what's not important, shift their life. And then other people were like, let's get back to the way it was. Let's get back yeah. to the way it was. And they're just two different paths. Um, well, they've been sorely disappointed because it never went back. Well, that's the thing. 
it's it's the part of to be very new age like no it's an awakening we're in an awakening it was such a dramatic shake up yeah. that yeah. it will never go back and i think it was you know made to do that you know in mm. every part of history there's been the industrial revolution there's been there's different periods where we are things happen there's mm -hmm. shifts and then there's a movement into a new era yeah so uh you know, this yeah so Back to, let's get back to codependency because I feel like I could talk to you about absolutely everything on earth, yeah. Yeah. Um, especially like a sourdough bread. I'm so into it. But um, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So but it all with, ties in, by the way, just to say. Okay. Codependency, it all ties in. It's all about breaking free. So keep going. <laughs> so like breaking free, how do you help people with that? Where do you go with that? Like, um, I love that you go to Kanjani. I want to meet you there sometime. I'm so let's excited. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm super excited. Um, how do you break people, not break people, I, how do you set people free? How do, for me, so, I, my yeah. life hack was always to just hang out with only codependents because mm -hmm. then it just always took care of me. Yeah. Like, so I didn't have to change and I didn't come up short or empty. That's right. It was That's right. It was like a really good life hack. Yeah. And that yeah. was a wonderful thing about my husband and I is like he took care of me and I took care of him and we were happy. Yeah. Yeah. But it really, I mean, now we've learned to to be a lot healthier and set boundaries with each other and ask for what we want, which we never did in the first eight years of our marriage. We wouldn't ask for what we wanted. Right. Right. And like we were both not getting what we wanted. <laughs> right. We just assume other people should know. I don't know where that came from either. And if you don't know, then you're bad. You know, it's I like, know. Mm, but I never told you. So. Yeah. Right? And then you're yeah. also not supposed to be a know-it-all. So I don't even know what people want from us. <laughs> you want me to know everything without knowing everything. And again, that's the key to why when we just, it's basically we're pointing our finger out, trying to figure out who we are and what we're supposed to do in the outside world with other people and their opinions of us and the, the messages we're getting. And when we make a decision to say, you know what, just as you said eloquently, if I'm too loud, I'm going to be criticized. And you've seen these memes before. Mm -hmm. If I'm too quiet, I'm going to be citizen, squid, I'm going to be criticized. So why don't I just be myself? Well, the issue is, is that a lot of times the codependency, we don't even know who that is, who yeah. that is tied, not tied to other people's needs. Yeah. Who are we? What do we like? Yeah. What do we really like? So we don't begin there, the work. So I, I have created like an eight week uh, program that I do with people. Um, I give it that time frame at least eight weeks because mm -hmm. I think we've had these patterns our whole life. So mm -hmm. Eight weeks is almost not enough, but it's at least enough to become conscious. Okay. So we look, you know, we look, first thing is just becoming conscious of our patterns. So we look at the root of, you know, what we're doing, where it comes from, why we do it, right? Let's get mm -hmm. honest about why we do it. And that's just like, you know, a few weeks of just like observing and paying mm -hmm. attention and watching ourselves, right? Right. And then I do... Um, the radical responsibility. I do it through multiple things. One of the things I use is the Ho'oponopono, which is an old Hawaiian, mm -hmm. you've probably heard of it, practice. So I do it with people and I have an advanced practice that I do with people um, because it's very important, especially for codependence because of our tendency to beat ourselves up, to really relinquish it to some divine source, to kind of say, you know, I take full responsibility. I brought this in to learn something. What yeah. am I meant to learn? I'm not a victim. I'm releasing the victim. It's like a it's like a process. A, right. It's soft. Izzy you know? and I we talk about like what how our inner monologue is like pure cunts. Like we're just horrible to ourselves. Like uh -huh. we would never ever ever like if I mess something up, the words yeah. that are coming at me from myself are hideous. Yeah. Like I would divorce me. 
But most likely that is because you're afraid of the consequences of being imperfect because it's a now, child if you made it, you know? Yeah. I'm much better and I stick up for myself now. Sure. But like it used to be like, uh, I mean, if I were five minutes late, I was just horrible to me. So that I is still have that. I still have when I make a mistake, though, my in like my PTSD response initial mm -hmm. is almost panic. Yeah. Right. That's me. And and then there's a second. So that's the whole thing. Then it's like, oh, look at that. You're panicked. Take a breath. Mm -hmm. you're safe. Yes. Remember that this is old, right? So you just kind of, it's like creating new, new habits. Yeah. So that those first few weeks is really that I, I, I'm a musician. I'm a singer songwriter. You know that from my page. Yes. So the music that I do, a lot of the songs with words is about breaking free from, um, coming back to yourself, you right. know, um, all that. The, the, I write um, and record guided meditations also, and one of the ones that I use with clients is um, a safety meditation. And it's literally every day or twice a day you listen and it's saying, it's safe to relax. It's safe to focus on my wants and needs. Yeah. It's safe to relax. To relax and do nothing, actually. I don't say those words, but that's what you were talking about, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's safe to relax. I don't need yeah. to be like this preparing for somebody to attack me and anticipating everything that's happening all the time. Right. Right. So we move out of the fight or flight and that takes time. Just yep. move out of the fight or flight. And then once we've done that and we've started to like put a bomb of, of responsibility and divine beauty over our relationships, mm. then we start so to good. look at, we start to look at, um, with the, the view of radical responsibility, honesty, right? Not the victimhood only and not the perpetrator only. We start to look at, hmm, what are the things that maybe I could say or do that would create more freedom for me? Mm -hmm. What are the areas in which relationships that I could choose to set up boundaries? And it's so vast because, and that's why I say, we don't even... Until you start really looking into this, it's crazy how many areas of our life this limits us. You know, people talk, it's, oh, it's just in relationships like with a partner or a friend. But it's literally everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. I give the example of like an activity that I ask people to do, some people, you know, in the beginning. I say, when you're in the grocery store and you have your cart, I want you to completely focus on yourself. If you feel someone behind you that's getting close or something mm. going on, I don't want you to immediately apologize mm. and make sure that everything's okay. I want you yeah. to walk around the group. And I mean, for a true codependent, this is very difficult. Oh, trust me. My mother, she's absolutely, absolutely. I, I've, I've taken her by her arms and said, you belong here too. Don't apologize for being where you are. Right. Like she, because she, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I'll, I'll look at the stranger and say, no, she's not sorry. She's just not. Right. Right. And we really aren't. She isn't. Yeah. We're appeasing people to make sure they don't get mad at us. For mm -hmm. because of the fact that as children, most likely we got mad at people got mad at us all the time and we mm -hmm. weren't even sure why. Yeah. We literally were like, what's happening? Yeah. I, I don't That's understand scary. what I did. Scary. So then as yeah. an adult, we can't help it though. I had a friend I remember in my twenties and she, she, she was totally right. She said she was a little loony. I loved her, but you I know. love loony people. Oh, but so good. loony. And also I was like, you know, we have, we have spidey senses, generally mm -hmm. codependence where, you know, if someone is safe or not, and you're kind of always checking if they're emotionally mm -hmm. kind of unstable. And she told me, she's like, I noticed that every time you and I get together, you move my bangs away so you can see my eyes. Mm. I didn't even realize I was doing it, but she was very self-aware. You know, she's beautiful. And yeah. she's like, you move my, and I thought, and I was like, yeah, because I was checking what her mood was. Right. 
Because like codependents and people pleasers, they can read somebody's body language and face so well. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, beyond, especially if you grew up in a tumultuous home, you need to know you need to stick your toe in that water before you dove in. That's right. But that's the problem in a sense is that we're on such fight or flight. We're in such hyper spidey mode all day long. Yeah. That there's no room for us to actually construct an inner terrain. Yeah. You know, so So it's a gift. It's a gift. I I think we probably need to like, I notice, I notice a lot people say, oh, you know, I'm codependent. Well, Mm. it's not a fucking badge. No. Oh, oh yes. The other thing people say, thank you, is I'm an, I'm an empath. I just can't help but feel everything else everyone is feeling. That one upsets me, and I'll tell you why. Oh, good. Because, I love when people get upset. <laughs> oh, that one upsets Fun. me a lot because it's a cop-out. It's a mm-hmm. cop-out, in my opinion. Okay. And I'll say it about myself because I used to love to say I'm an empath. and yeah. Because, one, you completely excuse yourself from getting depleted by everybody around you and everything mm-hmm. going on. Yeah, And, two, I do that. spiritual boundaries exist. You get to choose what you're going to feel bad about. Yes. And often when we feel bad, it's because we think we're supposed to. We feel guilty for being okay when someone else is hurting. So the roots of that, when you start to go into it, you go, I can observe this person in pain and I can acknowledge it and do nice things, but I don't have to get in the well with them because if I'm in the well with them, we're both stuck in the well. Right. And a third person is going to have to come and help us out. Right. So that's not, there's no point in that. You can choose whether or not to get in the well. You can choose. And that I do believe, you know, not fully, because I mean, I don't know about you, but yeah, there's definitely been energies happening and I've been feeling them on a, you know, I've just Mm -hmm. been more tired. There's things that do happen that um, are so subconscious that I I don't have access to yet to how to protect myself. But Mm -hmm. there are many choices that I can make, you know, with empathy that um it's a choice it's a choice you know but it's again about becoming conscious so that's that's the whole point is we don't see it ourselves we don't i i think where like and izzy and i when we started this like it was like okay like some of these things that are bad are actually superpowers like the Mm -hmm. fact that i grew up in a tumultuous home made me better at reading people absolutely i mean just I'm simply better at it. I can walk in. I can literally from across the room read if somebody is going to be fake to me. Like I can tell they're being fake. That's right. Like I can tell somebody, um, you know, I know I know if one of my friends has an alcoholic at home for a husband. Yeah. It's a gift that I was given from the life I chose when I decided to come here because of all my experiences. So like these are gifts. 100%. And we don't have to always use them to our just like, you know, at our expense. Like, you know, like we sometimes pay the price for understanding that there is, you know, you don't have to react to it. You know, you don't have to give it energy, even though you are aware of it. Right. But I I think, you know, I always think about those Star Wars, like the little Padawans, the kids that they're being trained to be Jedis, you know, Mm -hmm. and they have all these powers. Like we have these gifts that we we have powers for sure because of the way we run up. But we have no idea how to wield it. So we're literally just throwing fire Mm. You know, or like the airbenders or fire, you know, in the stories yeah. of those, that are have to be trained. We have all these powers, but we're using it like crazy people. And it's totally out of control. And we don't actually have any control over it because well, like we're on automatic pilot all the time. It, it's not a power. It's not considered a superpower if you choose to use it against yourself. <laughs> right. right? Or, if it's, or if it's running you. If it's yeah. like, you know, I mean, let's look at the superpowers, like, you know, like Spider-Man, if Spider-Man I'm just wrapped himself that, you know? in, in his net the whole time. Yeah. Or was like done. throwing <laughs> like nets all the time, every time he saw somebody and like, you know, nobody would want to hang out with him. 
Well, and he'd be useless. He wouldn't be able yeah. to, to do anything good, right? Because right. he'd be just like, ugh. Yeah. It's kind of like that. So, yeah, I agree. We have superpowers, you know. Um, and I believe now that, uh, I, and I say this all the time to myself, I truly believe this. I'm always at the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So I'm I always back. trying to tell myself that. I'm it's so funny. It's like, I'm always like, okay, you're where you're supposed to be. And just like the superpowers you that you and I both have now came from childhood, any relationships that I've been in that I chose to not get out of, or I chose to whatever. Right. I made that choice to learn. I learned something from it. So I then Big can time. help others with it. And so, so for me, I'm like, I wouldn't be the person I am with all my gifts now had I not experienced those things. I now, literally like, would know. not be talking to you. I right. mean, it's a blessing. Yeah. It really is. It really is. It's like when you think about it, I've, okay, I'm going to just get really deep on you. Let's just dive in. So I love uh, it. Yeah. I love it. Go deep. So <laughs> when I was 18, I had a baby. His name was Jacob. He died of three, uh, three months old of sudden infant death syndrome. So I hit the ground face first coming into adulthood. But I will say that every single relationship that I have ever had afterward, I was so loving in because I lost him. Mm -hmm. It taught me how to be a more kind and loving and careful human being. It's the most beautiful gift anyone has ever given me is to cherish right you get me all emotional but you're right to cherish life to cherish, cherish life. life can you imagine how amazing that he just came here for three months to give that to me right. i'm grateful you know did it feel really bad at the time <laughs> Did I drink myself into insanity for, what, a decade? <laughs> yes. But I never, ever walked away from someone with them not knowing how much I love them. Mm. Mm. And I'll never regret it. Right. 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 Very true. I mean, that's beautiful that you've come to that place. Mm -hmm. it, that. It, yeah. It, it would took a long, long time to sure. realize it. It really did. It took a long time to realize it and realize the why behind it, because I think I was a machine gun coming into the earth. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I think I was coming into adulthood. Had I not had him, I would have been a machete. Mm -hmm. I just was so sharp and and just cutting and witty. And I just don't think I think I would have caused a lot of harm. Interesting. Yeah. But well, and ultimately, this, as a machete, we're not happy too, though, right? You probably yeah. Would, yeah. But I wasn't happy coming mm -hmm. into, you know, like we had experienced a lot in childhood that had made me sharp like that. Mm -hmm. But he made me cherish. And it just was like a, a, a big time game changer. I'm a much better human being because of him. So, but anyway, it's, you're right. Well, you, yeah. You're right. You cut, you, you stay in those relationships because you do have more to learn. Yeah. And, you know, um, I've had my share of things that like, you know, that I think, oh, why did I do that? And then I do think in life, you know, we believe in magic and, mm -hmm. There is a mystical part, a divine part that we will never fully understand. But mm. I think that for me, and it's a, a safe song I wrote, it's called Keep Your Heart Open. Mm. And it's literally like about stuff can feel like too much. And yeah. you can just go, screw it. I don't want to, I'm going to shut down, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but then 
you are brave and you open up one more time, right? Because you know that the only thing that really exists is love. Mm -hmm. But, you know, your story, um, it's always a choice. You know, you can either at the end choose. I mean, in a sense, you're really explaining to me some serious radical responsibility and honesty that you practice there. Mm -hmm. Because you had an opportunity to choose to have this painful experience, open your heart more like turn mm -hmm. you like a sunflower towards the sun right? or to say, nope, I'm shutting down for good. I'm mm -hmm. shutting down more. Yeah. I'm not doing this. And it's a brave choice to it, open your heart. It was, it, it was, it was brave. And it took me 16 years to have another child. <laughs> I 16 get it. 16 years. And then I did, and that was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, and it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. Yeah, I just, feel it. I oh. feel it. How old is your little one now? Uh, Scarlett is her name. Yep, she yeah. is 11. Oh, wow. And we also homeschool her. Amazing. It's so Amazing. good. It's yeah. so good. How old is yours now? Nine. Oh, such a great age. Yeah. Such a great age. So yeah. when, so tell me how people can get a hold of you if they want, if they need to work on this, which everyone needs to work on it there. I mean, just <laughs> yes. everyone does, right? Pretty much. And I, you know, I will say just before I say that, I will say, you know, um, I speak from my own experience. We look at consciousness. I'm not here. A lot of people are here to tell you what to do. Right. That is not my job. My What I love to do is sh remind people, and it's in my music, remind you of who you really are Okay. to become conscious of who you are. So just want to say that. That's what the work is. So it's really about opening. It's, it's an opening, like the sunflower. That's what it right. is. And it can be really scary. And so working with someone, and I've had my own mentors and people I've worked with along the way, is really different than reading a book about codependency and trying to fix right. yourself. Uh, we often, I like to be able to walk with the person and just be right. there. So it's not as hard. Uh, I have a website, which is um, www.codependencyfreedom.com. Okay. You can go there. All explains right. a little bit of my, what I do. And then you can send me a message in there. I do a 10 minute phone consult for free if people just want to connect real quick and see if it's a match. Um, I think it would be a really good idea if somebody's feeling empty to do that, right? Yes, yes, okay. 100%, 100%. Okay. Um, and then uh, you can find me on Channel the Love on Instagram. Uh, I write music, I channel sounds, um, I do sound healing as well. It, it goes in tandem because it's mm -hmm. about calming the nervous system, returning back to who you are, all of it ties in. So it's all yeah. about returning back to who you are, remembrance of who you really are with all the other stuff, not there anymore, you know? Exactly. Not, um, not drawing it in, not pulling it in. Yeah. Well, not taking all the focus, right? Okay. <laughs> Just, you know, like, yeah, let's take it down to like, what's, what's we started with, which is what's actually real. Perfect. Love, love, love is real. Love That's is it. Real. Right. And um, and then figure out who you are, because you are an essential who you are really is an essential piece of the puzzle. Right. right. And if people are afraid to do it, just let me tell you, most likely if you're hiding, if you're not who you are, then likelihood your friendships, relationships are not fulfilling you in the way you want. And you may feel like a victim and you may be upset about it. But I can promise you from my own experience the minute that you start to actually reveal your true self, it's almost like you're, you're playing a trumpet into the universe and all the people that are your people go, mm -hmm. oh, there she is. I was I, wondering where she was. I it happens. Didn't see her. It right. happens. It's yeah. like once you come into the light, you can be seen. You can be seen. And your people will show up and it won't be as scary. Mm -hmm. Some stuff will shift. Some relationships will will naturally shift in one way and then new relationships will come. But it's it's a beautiful process. So I love it. I love it. I love. Oh, I can't wait to hang out with you. I'm so I know, excited. Me too. Me too. I'm so, I got a new friend, y'all. I'm so happy. 
And I get okay. really excited. My husband's always like, don't be crazy BFF, okay? Because I'm like, I, oh my God, I let's know. hang out. Let's go. I know. <laughs> I'm like so excited. But I absolutely love your vibe. You are so cool. Me and I, too. I really can't wait to hang out with you. Me so too. nice Me to meet too. you. All so right. nice to meet you. All right. Bye. All right. See you soon. Bye. See you. Thanks for joining us this week on We Need Help, the podcast, the duct tape of self-help. Please visit our website, weneedhelpthepodcast.com, where you can find links to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and all the others, so you'll never miss a show. You'll also find links to the books we've reviewed and our amazing store. If you enjoy this podcast, go right now, because if you're anything like us, you'll never do it later. Like and share our page and episodes on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or just tell a friend about the show. That would help us out too. Also, feel free to let us know what you need help with, and we'll try to cover it in a future episode. You can also find us on Instagram at we need help underscore the podcast. Thank you for listening. We love you. See you next Tuesday.